Hi there. I got this piece of artwork from one of our designers and it's really a beautiful watercolor piece. Um, but I'd like to talk today and do a quick tutorial on um, how at Polychrome we want to have our files organized. Um, you can see here on the right hand side in the layers panel I've um, collapsed the template um, form and actually I'm going to shut off the watermark for now just so that it isn't a distraction for us. Um, the artist had created several different colorways. I'm going to turn them on in turn so you can see um, what the different colorways of the artwork are layered on top of one another. Um, let's see. So um, this is all fine having the different um, colorways as a flattened layer so the client can easily see them is something that we do regularly do. However, when we give this flattened layer look, we do still have all of the motifs. So in this case, there'd be all the parts that make up the floral motif. Those are flattened into one layer that is then made into a pattern and then like dropped onto the field. But the background color, so in this case this pale purple, um, that background color always should be on a separate layer because if the client had come to this print and they had simply wanted to just change out the background color, it would be a lot easier for them to do that than the way that um, the design has been presented right now. So um, I'm going to shut off these layers as you can see on the right hand side. Right now we are just left with the single background color of this pale pink. Um, I want to point out that the artists did their due diligence by setting up guides around the area that is to be the one full repeat, um, so that's fantastic. And they actually have a layer that says flat repeat, um, and that layer does have a transparent background, so that part is perfectly fine. Um, if you were to try to execute what I mentioned earlier of just having the pattern fill without the background um, included, you would just shut off the background here and then um, you know draw a window using the guides and then uh, use that to create your pattern fill. The thing that I'm the most concerned about though is what happens if one of our clients wants to actually take this um, pattern and do a more extensive um, revision, I guess, than simply changing the background. In that case, they may want to change or remove or scale or whatever one of the um, pattern pieces, one of the motifs. So the artist has included all of the original motifs here in this floral motifs folder. Um, and I'm going to turn it on. So perhaps you can see the problem that we have. Um, although the motifs are there, and if I open up this floral motifs folder and um, scroll up in the layers panel, I'm going to drag this panel out actually so that we can even make it longer. You can see that all of the individual pieces that make up this, um, these floral motifs here are totally separated and isolated out um, for the most part by color. And that's perfect. It's exactly what we want it to be. However, when you look at the motifs themselves here on the artwork panel, they actually aren't arranged in a pattern um, already within the repeat box. So that creates an issue for our artists, I'm sorry, for our clients, if they wanted to go ahead and change this uh, design. If they wanted to say, take out a couple of the um, motifs that are here, or they wanted to just simply change the color of one of the floral motifs, so I'm gonna be changing. Oops. Just for an example, changing the color of these motifs that are here. I'm just gonna quickly do a color overlay. Hit OK. So you can see I changed those to blue just for the sake of the example. But after the client made these revisions, removing some things, scaling some things, or recoloring, whatever that they need to do, um, they don't actually have a full repeat of what our pattern should look like within the bounding box here that's set up by the guides. So it really isn't going to be easy for them to make this um, revised pattern. I'm really quickly going to go through how you would go about doing this 
Um, and forgive me if the pattern that I end up having isn't um, absolutely gorgeous. I really just want to sort of set an example, and this is a fairly um, beautiful, intricate piece of um, hand-painted artwork that the artist has done. I think it's going to take a lot longer than you're willing to tolerate on the video to watch me do this. So the way that I would tackle this issue, if it, if it were my original artwork, is I think it would be easiest if we isolated this bunch of flowers from this bunch of flowers. Um, and that might be a little hard for me to discern just going um, through the layers panel, but I'll quickly try to give it a shot. And the fastest way I know how to do that is to um, simply turn layers on and off. So that's a piece from um, pattern one. So I'm just going to put a one in the front so that I've labeled it for myself. And I'm going to go up the line really quickly and try to get this done. I'll be quiet while I'm doing it so I can work more efficiently. So that's obviously part of the number two motif. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> I know that was probably a little tedious. Um, now I'm going to collect all the motifs that I found to be in number two and stick them in a separate folder. And I'm just going to call it um, bouquet two. And I'm going to shut it off to make sure I kind of got it right. It looks correct. And then I'm going to repeat the same action for the motifs in bouquet number one. Just drag them into their own separate folder. I'm going to call this bouquet one. Okay, hang in there. There's a method to the madness here. Um, now I'm going to take each one of these um, groups, these uh, motifs that I've isolated, and um, and I'm going to go ahead and make it into a smart object. And I'm hesitating because I'm realizing as I'm speaking to you um, something I should have noticed earlier that um, one of these is simply the other rotated. So we'll save ourselves um, quite a bit of pain in the process if I simply blind out bouquet number two and we forget about it for now. Um, and we simply work on bouquet number one for the short term. So bouquet number one, we are going to turn this into a smart object. You do that by highlighting either the entire folder 
Um, or if there were a case where you only wanted several motifs to be in one smart object, you would do it here. But in this case, we want the whole folder. So I've got it highlighted and I am going to go up to layer and smart objects. And I'm going to convert this to a smart object. And it takes a minute. Um, you can see the difference now between a full folder of these motifs and what a smart object looks like. Um, so any of you that haven't worked at all with smart objects, some of this might be uh, a little new to you, and there's a myriad of videos out there um, on the internet, on YouTube especially, about how to use smart objects. Also in um, the Adobe online website, um, you can find lots of great tutorials. So I'm not going to really give an intense explanation about smart objects, except to say that I think that's the best way to handle artwork like this, because then once you start making revisions, um, it, it just will make your life a whole lot easier. Um, you'll only have to sort of make a revision once. So um, I'm going to take this bouquet one here, smart object, and I'm going to drag it down and make a copy of it. And I'm going to call that one bouquet two. Um, and I'm going to take my uh, selector tool move that smart object here and as you can see it's moving all of the motifs in the smart object and you can even um, do various edits to the smart object as a whole so I'm going to hit command T so I can um, rotate it and um, transform it similarly to the composition that uh, we first started working on. I'm going to move it in. Okay. So this is kind of step one of, of how I think that we need to revise this piece of artwork. Um, we've created the smart objects. I've sort of duplicated what was going on um, here in um, her original composition, I think. I rotated a little too much if I was going to use hers as a guide. Maybe it was something more like this. So the thing that we need to do if we are going to maintain these same exact repeat boundaries is to create a repeat with these smart objects within the boundaries. Um, I'm going to move these things over. And you can see that there are some pieces that are actually hanging outside of our boundary lines. Um, the quickest way to figure out how to um, quickly get this same motif in the position on the opposite side of the boundary so that we get a seamless repeat and we don't have something that looks like a broken repeat, so to speak, um, is to use the filter offset option. And I myself find filter offset a lot easier to use if you actually set up your guides to be um, more round inches. So I am going to modify the size of the repeat just slightly for my convenience for this demonstration. So I'm going to put my top horizontal guide at 4 inches and I'm going to put the bottom horizontal guide at 15 inches. So we know that um, along the um, vertical plane our repeat is going to repeat out every 11 inches. And then we want to do the same thing um, with these vertical guides. We just kind of, or I want to anyway, make it easy for me, set it up so that it's falling right on, um, right on an inch mark or half an inch mark, just something that's like a little easier for myself. So our horizontal repeat is going to be set at 1 and 11, so that means it's 10 inches. So our repeat is 10 inches across by 11 inches high. It's actually really pretty easy to um, configure, to set. So what that means is that we need to get this motif number two, which I'm turning on and off so that you can see what I'm talking about, and we need to copy it, but then we need to shift it up 11 inches. So I'm going to drag this out and um, actually, I only want motif number two. I'm going to create a copy of it. And that copy is resting right on top of here, and that's why you can't see it very well. Um, but I'm going to go up to filter up here in the menu bar and I'm going to hit other and I'm going to go to offset. Now our um, 
our DPI for this file, for all of the polychrome files in Photoshop, is always 300. Um, so whatever the inches are that we've designated our repeat boundaries to be, we are going to need to multiply that by 300. Um, I'm not going to repeat this horizontally. I'm right now just repeating it vertically. And we know that the vertical repeat is um, 11 inches. So it would be 11 times 300 to get how many pixels up that we want it to shift. So I'm actually going to whip out my calculator. I always have my um, phone handy to use the calculator on my phone uh, to do these so I don't have to bother my brain to do the math if I don't want to. Um, so that means that we are at 3,300 pixels. And as you could see, like it actually defaults to that many pixels down. However, we want it to be pixels shifting up. So we are going to type negative 3,300. And you'll see after I hit OK. Actually, you could see it in the preview. Um, one other thing I should mention before I close this window with the OK is that um, you want to set the undefined area to transparent. You don't want it to wrap around the edges, um, and you don't want to repeat that pixel. So you want to hit set to transparent. So now I'm going to hit OK. And you can see the breakpoint for the repeat vertically is here and here. Now, there's actually a tiny bit of the repeat here for this motif. Um, I'm going to cheat a little because it's such a minuscule amount. And I'm actually going to hit bouquet number one. And I'm just going to um, shift it up. There you go. Enough so am I. OK, cool. Now I don't have to do that again. I know that's lazy, but um, it's OK to have shortcuts like that. I think as long as the final outcome is fine. One other thing I'm going to mention is that here in the Layers panel, you can see that that filter has been applied to the bouquet to copy of our smart object. You can see it here as a smart filter. If you were to shut this filter off, you'd see that disappear. So it sees it as an effect of sorts that you're applying onto that layer. So that's really worth noting. OK, so the next piece that we want to repeat and shift over is we're going to go back to the K number one. So again, that's the one that's right on the far left. You can see that it has some areas of motif hanging outside the repeat frame. So I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to kind of repeat the same action that you saw me do up here. I made a copy of it. Um, it isn't going to be exactly the same dimensions because we had made our repeat 10 inches across. So um, we're going to open up the filter. And we're not going to go to this uh, selection of offset because that'll just repeat the same exact action when, in fact, we actually want kind of a new instance of the filter. We want it to be um, zero pixels down. I'm sorry. Yes, zero, zero pixels down. And we want this one to be moved horizontally to the right. Um, so it's 300 dpi. 10 inches across on the repeat, so that's going to be 3,000. Again, we have this set to transparent. We have the preview on. You can see that everything looks kosher and it's all lined up. Then we're going to hit OK. Cool. So that looks like it's, um, it's lined up nicely. The only thing that we have left to do, if you were to copy this, it would repeat perfectly. But it isn't actually a beautiful pattern repeat as it we have like large blank areas that need to be filled in and I warned you at the beginning of this video that I'm not going to spend I'm not going to dedicate a ton of time um, on how to create this and we might end up with like a gorgeous print at the end the important thing for me is to show you the technique at this moment of how to get this done so um, just hang in there. We'll fill this in with something so that you can see it coming in in the repeat, but we're not going to be really particular about what that something is and the overall composition of our final object. So I'm going to open up this bouquet. If you remember, this is the one that we said, oh, I don't actually need that because we have um, other instances of it, but I'm going to sort of like mine this piece for other motifs um, by eliminating some things. So let me just kind of go down the line and I will shut off some areas of the motif that 
are kind of crashing into the stuff that we've already worked on. Oops, that one I will keep. All right, so um, we are going to keep these pieces. Yes. And we're going to eliminate the other. So this other one that I've shut off, I'm going to just throw all the ones I've shut off for now into the trash. So they're not going to be sort of, um, you know, making a, a mess of our artwork. And I'm going to repeat the same idea of taking this bouquet here. And this one we're going to call bouquet three because I've changed it so much. And I'm going to make this into a smart object, just as you saw me do before. Go up to layers. Um, and go to Smart Objects and just write, or click rather, Convert to Smart Object. It's going to take a second. My Mac is a little old. Um, and just because I, I want to shift this around, I'm going to hit Command T for Transform, and I'm just going to turn the Smart Object around and hit Enter. And I'm just going to use this object to sort of fill in some blank space. Even if it isn't perfect, it's okay. We can deal. So I'm going to um, hit Alt so that I can create a copy of the smart object and move it up here as well. And you remember how we get these pixels to repeat along the lines that they're supposed to. It looks like it's going to crash into that piece a little too much, so I moved it down. Um, so this smart object, BK copy, BK3 copy, I'm going to make yet another copy of it. And this one I am going to shift across. So in this case, I can go to filter offset and I can just hit offset because it's going to give me the same iteration of the lost offset rules that we had. I'm going to hit OK, and you can see it over here. And then I'm going to create another of these bouquet threat copies um, for number three, because I need to also repeat the pixels that you see falling off the screen here, down in this area. So there's my copy. I'm going to apply another iteration of the offset filter. So I have to go to offset. This is going to be set to zero, and then pixels down is going to be set to 3300. Oops, 3300. Remember, because we have a vertical repeat of um, 11 inches. So I'm going to hit OK here. And that looks like it's all spread up. All right. I know that this isn't going to be the ultimate pattern, but I'm going to leave all of the revisions that I made here at this, just so that we can move on to the rest of how you go about using this technique. Um, I'm going to close up the folder that says floral motifs. And you can see that um, actually these fell outside of there. So let me move them up inside the folder too. It didn't take the pin number three into that folder. And I do like to have my layers panel as organized as I possibly can. Um, so I'm at this point going to close or shut off the background pink color. I'm also going to shut off the templates just so you can see. Um, the only important thing is that the repeat is going to be unbroken within these boundaries. It's okay that this area isn't filled in with repeat yet and I will show you why in an instant. Um, all of the floral motifs are on, the background is shut off, we are going to select our marquee and using the guides that we've already set up, we're going to draw a window. You can see that that window, um, the little 
box that's floating along with our marquee is 10 inches wide by 11 inches high, just like it ought to be. And then we're going to go up to Edit and Define Pattern. In the Define Pattern box, you can call it whatever you like. It really isn't that important, but because I can be kind of anal about this sort of stuff, I'll often put down the style number of what uh, the item is that we're doing. So style number, and um, I will even put the colorway. So I'm going to write pinky purple. Not super important, but I like to keep things as organized as I can. And then I'm going to hit OK. Awesome. So um, now I'm going to hit Command-D to deselect the area that I had selected. I'm going to put my cursor on top of the background layer and create a brand new, completely blank layer. And I'm going to shut off my flaw motifs. Now we are going to use that pattern that we just created to fill this entire area. Um, so I'm going to go to the paint buckets um, over here on the left. At least that's how I have my tools set up. And instead of having it such a foreground, it's going to be set to pattern. And you need to select which pattern you're asking it to do. So it's always going to default to put it in the last position. So that's really easy to find. And then I'm going to hit the screen. And you can see that our pattern is fully repeated. And if you put on the background, you can see that it looks lovely. And so here where the pattern is, I am just going to write um, flat repeated pattern um, enter and then I'm going to drag the flow on motifs folder between these two things and I'm going to keep it blinded out and then I'm going to take all of these things the flat pattern all the motifs that it took to make it and the background and I'm going to select them all and drag them into their own folder now I'm going to call this folder whatever the colorway is. And so because it's a pale pink ground, I'm going to call it pale pink colorway. All right, everybody on board, I hope. Um, at this point, I'm actually going to uh, get rid of, actually, I was going to get rid of all of the layers. Um, yes, I'm going to get rid of all of the layers because I'm going to show you all that you need to have in the final file. So I'm getting rid of all of these layers that were originally submitted to me by this artist. Um, the template is still here, obviously, as you can see. Um, all of the colorways and motif folders are going to fit inside one large folder called Design. So now let's make a second colorway. The second colorway does a couple of things. It makes your print a little more marketable and useful for our clients, but what it also does is it kind of allows you another chance to go ahead and kick the tires on your repeat and make sure everything is functioning the way that it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go to this pale pink colorway and I'm going to drag the entire folder down to the layer panel and create an additional one. Then I'm going to shut off this original one. And just for good measure, yeah, it was shut off. Now I'm going to select the new one um, that we call Pale Pink Colorway. And let's call this one Purple Colorway. And get rid of the copy. Hit enter. I'm going to change the color of the background to just a random um, pale purple right now, just to complete our demo. And I'm going to fill it with the paint bucket here. Remember to toggle off of pattern, otherwise you'll get a fill of the pattern. Make sure you're on the background layer and just fill it with the color of the next version that you're going to do. So in this case, it's going to be purple. You can blind off this flat repeated pattern because all of our work from here on out is going to be done here in the floral motifs panel. So turn the uh, visibility on and then open up the panel. Now, I'll be honest with you, here is where it starts to get a little bit confusing. So um, please just bear with me and it will be worth it and it will pay off. Um, but it does get a little confusing initially. Um, the two pieces that we really need to change the smart objects for are the bouquet and then also um, the bouquet number one. So bouquet three and bouquet one are what we're going to concentrate on right now. 
I'm going to open the Smart Object for the K3, and you'll see when I double click on this, it's going to open an additional tab with a brand new file that's like attached to this um, Photoshop file. So double click on that, and you can see that this is the whole um, Smart Object, and that's it, and it's on a transparent ground. And you can see that the style that we're working on is still there. You can even toggle back and forth to it. All we're concentrating on right now, though, is editing this piece here. Um, and there are several different flowers in this piece. For our purposes, we're going to change all of these colors, um, all, well, all of the variations of color to variations of another color, um, just so that we can illustrate how we're going to get this done. So let's change this to just a random color. I'm going to go to color overlay and I'm going to change it to, let's see what happens if I change it to a yellow, I guess like a very greenish. Um, let's change it to an aqua color for now, okay? So this aqua color is what we're going to use for all of those fuchsia flowers. Um, so because we're going to continue to use this, I'm going to add this to swatches before I close this color uh, panel. Name a swatch, so we can just call it blue flower. And um, it is here at the end of our swatches panel. So we're going to hit OK, OK. And we want to apply the same effect to all the other layers that you see. There is an easy way to do this. Just hover over the effect within that layer hit Alt, and it will make another instance of that effect elsewhere. See? So you don't have to go through the whole exercise again. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Oops, I didn't hit Alt. I'm sorry. There we go. All right. Very pretty. So um, what I'm going to do now to say, this is how I want to edit the smart object, is you go up to File, and you hit Save. And it saves this iteration of the smart object. You can see the little wheel there working in the little pop-up window that just happened. Now, you can close this. And when you go back to this panel, you'll see that that is a smart object that has been changed. Kind of like magic, right? Um, so that will change every iteration, all of the copies that we made of the K3. There's the beauty of smart objects. It really is fantastic, and even though it can be a little complicated if you haven't used them before, um, it's a real time saver. So now I'm going to open the smart object for bouquet number one. You want to open the original iteration of the smart object if you can, um, just to sort of keep things straight for yourself. I'm going to change all the pink flowers to that same um, color of aqua. So you just hit the flower. I'm just making sure I'm selecting that. Yep. So you hit the flower. Um, we're going to hit the overlay. The instance that I had last time should pop up again, which is kind of convenient. So I just hit OK. Then I'm going to apply this to every place that looks to me in the panel like it's pink. So remember you hit the Alt or Option key while you hold it down and drag. I'm just going to keep doing that. Oops. Yeah, that's right. All right, so now the only things that are left are these purple flowers. Let's change that to some iteration of green. Overlay. And it's defaulting, as you can see, to the last blue that we used, the last color that we used. Um, so you just hit this swatch, and you can change it to a different color for yourself. You want it to be quite that vibrant. So we'll change it to that green, and we're going to add that to swatches. I'm going to hit um, green leaves, and you'll see that it'll pair in our swatches panel after I hit OK. There's the green leaves. Sorry for this pop-up. Um, okay, 
We can try our best to make this go away. There we go. Um, now we're going to make a copy of each of these and drag it on all, to all the other layers um, just to be consistent that, you know, uh, we're purple. I think I accidentally um, made the blue color, so I'm just correcting that quickly. Same here. Okay, then there's one more purple leaf here. There we go. So now all of these have been changed the way we want them. Um, I'm going to close or reduce this just so we have a little bit more space. And you can see that we've successfully changed this colorway. You remember we just go up to File and Save. And it's saving the smart object. And then when we go back to our original file, Every instance of the smart object that we use to generate the other smart objects also are changed. Um, so you can see how this is kind of worth all the trouble that you go through um, in the end. So let's open this up. And I think the background needs to just get a little lighter. It's just hard for me to leave it alone if I see something that needs to get fixed. So let's make this a slightly paler shade of purple. And hit OK, and then I'm going to fill that area. Oh, that's better. Um, so now the very next thing that we need to do, because we have all of our floral motifs for our second colorway, the purple colorway, looking good and the background has changed, is we actually need to change this. Because if you remember, if I turn it on, you'll remember that it is the pink version. So um, first we're going to do that by shutting off the background color, having all the floral motifs on, taking the marquee, dragging it around the parameters of our guides, and then going up to um, edit and define pattern. And again, we'll just put down the style number, whatever that may be for you. And then the colorway is purple. And I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to hit Command D to get rid of the rectangular marquee that I had. I'm going to shut off these floral motifs. I'm going to turn on the flat repeated pattern and I'm going to hit Command A so that I have the whole area selected and now I'm going to delete all of that. Sorry, I didn't have the layer click. That's why I didn't delete. Delete. Um, now we're going to use a paint bucket. And we're going to fill this area with our brand new colorway of that pattern. So remember, paint bucket, change from foreground to pattern. In the pattern panel here, you're going to select the second colorway. should be the very last thing that is created. We're going to hit that screen and fill it up with a new pattern. And then we're going to turn the background on. So now, if I collapse this, we have both our purple colorway and our pink colorway. So there's pink, there's purple. Make sense? Um, so that is how I get all of this, uh, well, files of this kind organized. Um, a lot of the things that we mentioned here can be used for different kinds of artwork when you're making a pattern repeat in Photoshop. Um, but obviously it may need to be tweaked here and there for specific instances. We're going to turn this template on. We are going to turn the watermark on. Um, 
Normally we would also turn the ID number on, but in this case I actually just blinded it out because um, I wasn't sure the artist who made it wanted would want our ID on there. You're going to shift the opacity of the um, watermark so that it's obvious enough, but not distracting. The watermark is there to protect the artists, but we don't want it to distract from the sale. Um, in the panel, you would also adjust the ID number to be whatever you wanted. We're going to save this file. Save as. And oh, well, there's the number anyway. So I'm going to put down NN19004 um, PSD. I'm just going to save it in my downloads folder. Um, I don't know where you guys prefer to save your own things, but always remember to save a copy of your files on your hard drive uh, before you upload it to the Dropbox for us. So I'm going to save this piece right now. Give it the time it needs to save. Then um, I might as well go through showing you how to save the PNGs that we want. So if we think that this violet is going to be our dominant colorway for this print. We want to save the whole print um, in the template as one PNG and then we're also going to crop it and save a swatch PNG. So let's save the full template first. Um, I'm going to click on File, Export. I'm going to Export As. And the reason why I want to go through the efforts of Export As is because I want us to make our PNGs a little bit smaller than the um, standard settings, just to sort of um, save a little space, but also so that our upload times on the website didn't take too long. So you're going to shut off transparency. Sorry, you're seeing all my, all my pings there. <laughs> and then we're going to change the scale to 50%. And everything else looks like it is checked the way that we would like it to be checked. We convert it to an RGB file that's perfectly fine. And we're going to export all. The way that I like the PNGs to be named are the file name um, plus the number. If Actually, if you have a name for this, I hadn't done it this time. Let's um, call this just for sake of example. I'm going to call it wildflowers. And then you're going to put another dash and you're going to put FS and that stands for full size so that I can see just by looking at the name of the file that this is the file that includes the polychrome template. Um, oh, because this is the violet colorway, I'm going to write violet. So it makes sense. Style number, style name, colorway, and then FS. And then I'm going to hit enter. It's taking a minute. You can see that beach ball spinning around and around. Um, and then the next two PNGs that we are going to create are going to be the swatches that I mentioned earlier. So we're going to go to the crop um, tool over here. I have my setting defaulted to be square. And I'm going to drag out a square that reads 10 by 10, you can see the little hover box there. If it's like a couple of pixels or a fraction of an inch off, it's really okay. Um, and if you need to pull it along to sort of make a more pleasing composition just in the swatch, that's fine too. Remember on all these PNGs, we want to keep this watermark turned on in our layers panel. And now I'm gonna hit enter. And now we're going to save this as a PNG. So again, file, export as. The settings that we just adjusted should come up automatically. So uh, transparency is unchecked. We're still at 50%, so that all looks good. And now we're going to go to export to all. Um, I'm going to call it the same thing uh, because it's the same name plus violet, except I'm going to change this so it says swatch and then hit enter. Then we're going to shut off the visibility on the purple colorway and we're going to repeat the same exact action for this pale pink colorway. So file, export as. I 
that's for all. And I'm going to hit that swatch one and I'm just going to change the word violet to pink and hit enter. Great. Um, I am going to close both of these files. I'm not going to save this because it wants to save the cropped version and we don't want it to do that. We, we know that for sure that we saved it when it was like the intact Photoshop file. So we're going to close that. We're also going to close the smart object. We don't need to make any changes to that. The reason why I wanted to close those things out is because I actually want to gather the files I just made into a folder as if I was going to upload them to the Dropbox, just so you guys can see me kind of like come full circle with this um, design. So there are the files we worked on. I am going to create a new folder. The new folder is going to be called NN19004 Wildflowers. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to gather up all of these files and just like drag them in. Great. Now you're ready to take this folder and just paste it into the Dropbox and send me a quick note saying, hey, I have a new file for you to look at. I hope this made sense to you guys. If for any reason it didn't and you found it confusing or you need further clarification or you have a special case, any of those things or anything at all, just send me a, a text or an email or pick up the phone and call me. I really do enjoy working with you guys and um, I'm, I'm happy to hear from you. I'm happy to answer your questions. So thank you for listening. I know it wasn't the shortest tutorial, so I appreciate your attention. Bye.